Opposition Member of Parliament for Naparima Rodney Charles wasn't a fan of the Regional Crime Symposium, which took place on April 17th and 18th. He saw it as a palm off. To shift the, the responsibility for crime away from himself and a crime plan towards CARICOM colleagues. So, when we look at that conference, what a colossal waste of time, money, effort, and talent. Charles says the government has blamed crime on several things except the performance of the Minister of National Security. And Dr. Rowley's excuse for not firing Heinz was pathetic. Essentially, he said firing will make a difference. In addition, the UNC believes no just reason was provided for ignoring the suggestion it put forward to separate the Ministry of National Security into two, Home Affairs and Defense. Charles says a CARICOM approach to dealing with crime is not new, but so far it has failed to present solutions to curb TNT's murder rate. His message to the Prime Minister is to put the people first. Talk less and listen more. Treat the opposition with respect and meaningfully engage us. We will help you come up with smart crime-fighting strategies. But first, Dr. Rowley, you must shake off the spell put on you by Fitzgerald Hines and fire him yesterday. And despite not being optimistic, he hopes that a symposium would bear fruit, as he suggests that both CARICOM and TNT have an implementation problem. Former UNC Senator and Attorney at Law Sean Sobers has a slightly different take on the symposium, which produced a 15-point CARICOM action plan. Some of them could be considered to be commendable, but we as a responsible opposition, again in collaboration with MP Charles, we call upon quick implementation of these plans so that the Caribbean region as, an, as a whole could actually see some of these plans come to fruition and possibly see the efficacy of it redound to the, bene the benefit of all citizens within the Caribbean region. However, he says there is already a ban in law on assault weapons for civilians in TNT. And Sobis does not believe that correspondence to the Biden administration would lessen the illegal trafficking of firearms into this country. As he notes, guns are legally manufactured in the United States. Are we then asking the United States of America to erode the rights of their citizens and to remove their Second Amendment because guns and other things, illegal things, are flowing within the borders of the Caribbean region, within Trinidad and Tobago? Where is the logic in such a correspondence being issued? Alicia Boucher, TV6 News.